All right. So, Tim, what do you think? Well, this is all about where we came from and where we came from in the last couple of weeks. When you when you cut four and a half percent of your workforce, you talk about a one point two charge and you don't reaffirm. Suddenly, the analyst community got on top of that. We saw a bunch of downgrades going into this number. This, to me, is where we came from in the last two weeks. There's nothing in here to get. I mean, dire. Steve uses the word dire. I, I would just say some of this. The you know, PC dynamics are, are well advised. The the 24 percent intelligent cloud growth, I think, is still pretty strong. We knew these sales numbers were going to be weak. We know that Microsoft pulled a lot forward. Um, what do you want to pay for this company? You know, somewhere around 22, 23 times 2024 free cash flow is the number that I think the street is at. And I think much above that, it starts to get expensive. So isn't it expensive now, just about? It is somewhere in line. It is just north of that. Okay. Dan. Yeah, I think it's interesting. I mean, Tim just said, you know, it depends where you're coming from here. The NASDAQ is up, what, you know, close to... It's underperformed this year. Yeah, so it's massively underperformed. It came into the day unchanged. I suspect you see the stock sell off when they give the guidance because, you know, everything that Steve just mentioned that was reported in the quarter versus lowered expectations, they just got, I think he used the term smidge. I think that's a yeah. technical term. Mm -hmm. was, everything was a smidge um, better. When you think about that 2% um, year-over-year revenue growth, I mean, they haven't done that since 2017. So to me, I just think one of the takeaways Takeaways, I think, is interesting. Satya Nadella mentioned uh, in the note, we are committed to helping our customers use our platforms and tools to do more or less today and innovate in the future. And they're talking about these new AI tools. They're talking about that investment in open AI. I think this is going to be a big part of the next stage when they do start to reaccelerate. But I just don't think that you're going to have a one-quarter deceleration the way that they have on a year-over-year -year basis to be so, so weak. So I, I, let, let's see what they report when they guide for the current quarter and for the full year. But I suspect it's going to be a multi-quarter event. We've seen in the conference call we saw back in June, I mean, that the the earnings came out. The stock closed at 256. It was 242 in the after hours. Mm -hmm. We sat here, listened to the call. They said that we're not seeing demand destruction. Next thing you know, it's 258, and the broader market rallied along with it. Stock, I think, traded up to 300. So here we are. So the numbers that we haven't talked about. Dan makes fun of me, and he made fun of me before the show. Operating margins came in 38.7%. A year ago, same quarter, 43 percent and less than the street was looking for. But it's clear that the only thing I think the market is focused on is intelligent crowd, cloud and the Azure revenue growth, which is up in constant currency, 38 percent year over year. All good things. Valuation matters, though. And this conference call is going to matter. And I got to tell you something. And Dan mentioned this a couple weeks ago, and Jim Cramer brought it up on his show. Mm -hmm. That Satya Nadella interview he did in India on CNBC Asia, he did not paint a particularly rosy picture going forward. No, but he does have, I mean, he could control the narrative a bit on the conference call, Bonwin, when it comes mm -hmm. to talking about um, the opportunity with its AI investment. I mean, analysts are all jazzed up about this, or investors in terms of the long term. And so if Satya Nadella is able to sort of, you know, really paint the picture of what Microsoft is after, what it sees with that, people can get very bullish on this one. Uh, possibly, but I, you know what, I'm kind of taking a step back and looking at this particular price action post earnings vis-a-vis -vis what has happened with other tech names over the better part of the last three to four weeks. And Microsoft really hasn't had that that participation in the upside value that a lot of these other names do. And that's without me even stepping out on the risk curve and looking at the really highly leveraged beta type of names. So for me, this is kind of a proverbial sigh of relief. We were extremely concerned around Azure growth. That that came in you know, roughly in line with expectations, slightly above expectations. It wasn't a complete collapse. We had already expected weakness in PC demand. That was in line. There, I'm still curious to see what they're going to say about SMBs. Um, and, and stickiness around that customer base. But if you take a look at the price action today and compare it to what we've seen from other tech names, to me, this is really just people saying, okay, perhaps we got a bit too negative on the name, but I, I wouldn't read uh, as much into the positive one-day price action as a one-day move might suggest. 